Wow, so much has been written online, so many opinions formed over the last two weeks, so much controversy over this, the Nokia 808 PureView. Why so divisive? Well, because as a general smartphone, this is another Symbian device, possibly the last one ever, and yes, almost certainly the best. Yet, not everyone's a lover of the ever so grey-haired Symbian these days, but they're still in awe and insanely jealous of the monster 41 megapixel sensor, the PureView oversampling, which means cleaner, noise-free photos, lossless digital zoom, and more. Sorry, Symbian haters, this camera tech is highly proprietary to Nokia, and is likely to only be seen in some Windows phones, and even then not until 2013. You can see why some reviewers are rather peeved, though. <laughs> However, PureView was developed on Symbian from day one, so it's only fitting that it should grace what is most Nokia and Symbian lovers' ultimate converged device. Heck, it might even be the last converged device to this degree, period. I can't quite imagine the same camera bulge being accepted in the Windows Phone, Android or iPhone camps. Converged it is though. I've often gone back to the original definition of a smartphone being that it runs a proper operating system and has the hardware chops to replace multiple devices. Most of the converged functions will be obvious, but a little lateral thinking sees esoterics like binoculars being replaced too. After all, in 360p video mode, you've got 12 times lossless zoom displayed on a glorious reflection-free screen and with the ability to capture it all to MP4 instantly. It sure beats squinting through tiny plastic eyepieces in a heavy accessory. The same converged thinking applies throughout the 808 with a, a top microphone, a top speaker here on the back, USB on the go, NFC, HDMI out, FM transmitter, micro SD slot and LED purely for a torch mode, it seems. There's Xenon flash for nighttime photos, of course. Put simply, the 808 is the most connected and most flexible Symbian powered converged device ever made. And I love it for that. But the very definition of a smartphone has been subtly changing ever since the iPhone appeared, ostensibly offering desktop-like web browsing and large screen touch applications. Smartphone in 2012 means the tech industry is something different to what the term meant in 2005 and 2006, when a succession of converged devices from Nokia and from Palm and from the then unknown HTC coined the word smartphone for the first time. The distinction is important to note. Yes, the 808 PureView is a smartphone in that it runs a smartphone OS, Symbian, but developers have almost abandoned the platform now, so almost no new major applications get released in Symbian form, which means we're stuck with what we've got, 25,000 or so apps in the Nokia store here, which around 1,000 are pretty decent. The ratio of rubbish to decent, by the way, is much the same as in the Android and iPhone worlds, but the overall numbers are an order of magnitude down, at least. For fans of previous Symbian phones, the rightly famous N8 in particular, who have a set of third-party apps that work for them, the 808 PureView is the perfect upgrade with the best of Nokia's hardware technology in all areas, with Bell Feature Pack 1 having 99% compatibility with the apps that the user depends on, and with the 808's gadgets providing enough connectivity when needed. For someone coming from the feature phone world, if they've got some money, the 808 makes sense if the price doesn't actually put them off, since it's a heck of a lot smarter than whatever they were using before. For someone who's been using Android or iOS, then it's a far harder sell, having to deal without a number of mainstream 2012 applications in order to gain the 808's biggest unique selling point, the monster camera, is probably a no-go. For most people, the camera in a decent smartphone, SGS 2 or 3, iPhone, etc., is quite good enough for casual snaps. But for the camera phone connoisseur, the amateur photographer who loves having their camera converged into their always with them phone, the 808 PureView is the device to track down and use, even more so than the N8, which was uh, limited in other ways. Add that niche to the existing niche of die-hard Symbian fans and N8 upgraders, and Nokia has got something of a selective hit on its hands. Few network operators are ranging the 808, but that's actually not really important. Those who need the 808 will seek it out, and those who don't will ignore it anyway. And why would you need the 808? Well, the camera is stunning, starting with the 1 over 1.2 inch sensor that's bigger than in most standalone cameras, with 41 million pixels providing information to an advanced processing chip that then spits out pure pixels in 2, 3, 5, or in my most used mode, 8 megapixel form, or if you're in a serious shoot wide and crop it later mood, uh, for example, at a festival or in a crowd, you can shoot in the 34 or 38 megapixel mode, 
according to the aspect ratio needed, and then pick out a 3 megapixel photo out of a small fragment of the original image. The other headline feature, of course, is zooming in, depending on the output resolution needed, by up to four times with zero loss of detail and without normal digital zoom artifacts. This is possible because there are no optical parts other than the main focusing lens assembly. All the zooming is in software against that massive 41 megapixel sensor. This is test 1080p footage on the Nokia 808 Pure View. A rather lovely waterfall here in Somerset. Of course, with the 41 megapixel sensor, it means you can zoom in by four times <laughs> losslessly in video mode. That's pretty impressive. So you can get very close to the action, whatever the action might be. You can zoom out on screen or using the volume buttons. Either way, it's pretty smooth and, of course, silent because there's no motors involved. Test 1080p footage on the Nokia 808 Pure View. Picking out a subject in the medium foreground, not the dog. <laughs> there we go, looking at the sign. That's pretty impressive. And you get the new rich recording audio system which claims to cope with rock concert levels of volume or jet fighters here, bettering even the N8 and E7's digital audio system. Multimedia in general is excellent with terrific codec and resolution support and with a truly wonderful mono speaker. Let's ramp it up. Bit of Mr Bonamassa here. I hope I don't get pulled off YouTube for this. Play it, Joe. <laughs> um, a true story. At one point, I started some ambient music playing in my car on the phone, and I reached for my radio volume control on the car, thinking the FM transmitter was pumping the sound through the car speakers. And then I realised it was all coming from the phone. <laughs> wow. Build quality is excellent, with a premium, grippy exterior finish that most other plastic phones would die for. The clear black display is great too. Yes, it's an HD 360 by 640, but bear in mind that these are full RGB pixels, which for graphical content makes this arguably equivalent to QHD, that's 540 by 960 in the Pentile world. It's a debatable point. Black text on a white background is a little jagged sometimes, but for photos here, videos and games, I tell you, I genuinely cannot see the pixels. NHD is a complete non-issue for me. But great though all this is, is it enough? Long-standing Symbian bugs and annoyances are all still here. Wi-Fi glitches, annoyingly laggy rendering in web, slow and clunky social networking. Die-hard Symbian fans like me will have engineered workarounds for most of the above over the years, and we can put up with it all for the wonders of Nokia's hardware. But for how much longer? At least with few picking this up on contract, users are basically free to buy and sell SIM-free whenever they feel the need for something else. Me, the 808, instantly supplanted my N8 for my photo-heavy, podcast-heavy, social-centric smartphone use, using gravity, of course, and I'm loving it in that context. You spotted it at number five in the last phone show? I just couldn't resist. Long term, though, Symbian has got an official end-of-life announced, of course. The 808 Pure View is undoubtedly Symbian's, quote, last hurrah and should be enjoyed as such by those in the know. The PureView tech itself will go on to be refined for future Nokia devices over in the significantly less capable but more modern Windows Phone world. Who knows, perhaps Nokia could even raise a few euros licensing PureView to a few Android manufacturers. Now that I'd like to see. <laughs>